Looking for camper van insurance? You can legally drive it, but you can't drive it because it's not insured, so you cannot drive it? Please stay away. We are happy not having you as a customer today. Ready to start the video now that you're done no, ranting? I'm done with my rant here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into how we got insurance, finally. <laughs> We're Chico and Moritz. We've been building our dream camper van for a year and today we've got some great news to share. We got motorhome insurance! Wow, we can't believe it's taken us so long to get to this stage, but we are so grateful and so happy for all the people that helped us out along the way, including some of you guys actually. So thank you for believing in us for us to finally get over this identity crisis of getting motorhome classification and motorhome insurance. We wanted to make this comprehensive video on how to get insurance specifically for box trucks in Ontario because it was such a lengthy and like wildly confusing process for us. And we want to give you as much information as we possibly can so that you don't have to go through the same fiascos that we went through. When you are getting insurance for your box truck, there are two phases. The first phase is pre-conversion and after conversion, so convert it. In the pre-conversion phase, the best thing to do is to try to get insurance before you even pick up your box truck, which is absolutely not what we did. So we were scrambling for a whole week trying to look for insurance. And all you have to do sounds simple but all you have to do is you get the VIN number of your vehicle and you bring it up to insurance companies and see whether they will insure you. What you're going to run into though is this nebulous world of commercial vehicle on a personal auto policy. Long story short there are two bodies at play here that have contradicting information. The first body is your insurance company they will rely on your VIN number and its type of vehicle, which is established when the vehicle leaves the factory. So for example, our box truck, because its main use is for utility companies, usually it'll come out of a factory already pre-classified as a commercial vehicle. And that's what the insurance company receives. On the other hand, the Ministry of Transportation Ontario, or I guess Service Ontario maybe, they have a different classification of the vehicle in their system. So our box truck was actually classified already as a passenger vehicle because it is under the 10,000 weight limit. And so all they care about is the weight limit and the purpose of the vehicle, which determines its plates and tax purposes for it. So insurance company, commercial vehicle, for MTO, it was a passenger vehicle, but it was classified as a cargo van. Okay, clear as mud, right? And the only insurance companies that we've seen that will help camper van converters are Desjardins. They're the ones that are working with us. Allstate and the cooperators. The only caveat is they are probably going to want your other insurance policy, so just be ready to bring over any other home or auto lines that you already have. I've got three tips to help you get through this process as painlessly as possible. So the first tip is be honest. Never lie to insurance providers because if you don't tell them something and it ends up affecting your claim in the future, you're going to be paying a lot of money out of pocket. Another fact that I found out was that Aviva actually used to be an insurance provider for camper van conversions, but they stopped doing this in 2019 because every time there was a claim, it went to like errors and omissions, or I don't understand how that fully works, but what I interpreted from that was camper van converters were not giving them the full story and all the information so that when it came time to do the claim, even though the converter was covered, um, they ended up having to do a lot of paperwork to figure out that claim. And so they just decided to like completely cut that out of their business. So people don't lie. Oh, ow, that kind of hurt. Lying is bad. <laughs> the second tip I have for you is show your plans. Similar to if you were starting up a business and asking a bank for a loan, they want to see that you're committed and that you know what you're doing. So what we did was we showed them our plans from Tinkercad, which are super easy to put together. 
and now that they were able to like visualize what we were doing and see that we're just not like crocs or wax or whatever that word is in terms of like the camper van conversion world which is already so distant and unfamiliar to them now that they can see our dreams in paper that actually increased their level of commitment to us because now they're like wow this is really cool we want to help you out we want to be a part of your team and now that brings me to my third tip which is believe believe that it's all gonna work out because so many people have done it before you it's going to work out don't worry just be patient you'll find the right insurance broker that is willing to cover your case and when you come from a place of believing and having less stress you are going to be more clear-minded and people are more likely to want to help you because you're not acting crazy and like graspy and desperate for help and you're going to be more confident and be more courageous and come up with lines like what's the risk anyway or how do we turn unlikely into likely and that's when people give you more information and you kind of convince them to like be on your team and help you out so those are my three tips be honest show your plans and believe that it's gonna happen and at the end of all of this we were able to get a personal auto policy with a commercial vehicle so that we can drive our box truck around and pick up ingredients ingredients that's what Moritz says I says I, I says I says materials so that we can drive to like Home Depot and Lowe's and <laughs> he's laughing off camera <laughs> um, drive the box truck around of course if you don't need to drive your vehicle around to pick up materials then you don't need insurance at all we also as you can see are building this thing on the side of the road so we definitely needed to be road ready road insured um, it's a requirement in Ontario and I guess most places around the world so that's what we got at the end of all of this there's some sawdust on it <laughs> what's up? sure that took such a big bite mm -hmm. so much for going to you though <laughs> <laughs> So your conversion happens swimmingly, nothing goes wrong, and you're done. And you're like, I can finally go on this adventure! Except you are no longer a cargo van. You are actually now a motorhome. And we highly Did you hear that? Chico actually thinks she's a motorhome now. And we highly recommend that you convert your vehicle into a motorhome because you save a shit ton of money on insurance. We went from like $1,500 a year to $500 a year, which is fantastic. So how do you convert your vehicle into a motorhome class? So just as a quick reminder, this is with Service Ontario or the MTO, and they have your vehicle registered as a passenger vehicle because it's under 10,000 pounds and its class is probably a cargo van, which is what our box truck was. We're changing that class of cargo van into motorhome. And when you change it into a motorhome class, it opens up a whole new realm of insurance products or policies for your insurance provider so that they can actually insure your vehicle properly. Before we converted it to a motorhome, we were actually quoted like $3,400 for insurance per year because they were looking at our vehicle like it was a modified passenger vehicle which is like a special class of its own that warranted way more risk than it was prior to anyway so during this process we called sh so many <laughs> insurance companies so many people i was on the phone with service ontario like for days and there was just so much conflicting information but we found this lovely guy by the name of Bruce and followed his instructions to a T and we got our motorhome class, which is fantastic. And we'll link Bruce down below, but basically what you have to do is show up to Service Ontario with... Today we've got our massive package of paperwork to bring to Service Ontario. We've been struggling with this <sighs> for like months since we bought the truck like last year. So wish us luck. Okay, bye. <laughs> the lady
lady that's helping us is so lovely and so helpful and she's like come back because we forgot our vehicle registration our vehicle ownership slip which looks the same as the plate registration slip yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna double back <laughs> and hopefully there's some good news when we return take number two we got our magic slip <laughs> We did it! <laughs> we are now a vertical! Yes! <laughs> yeah, As we so jaywalk cool. and try not to get run over by cars. <laughs> a big step. Huge step. I am so hopeful that this is all gonna work out now. <laughs> so hopeful. <laughs> so, we are gonna head back home and celebrate! Celebrations! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so easy yeah. basically what you have to do is show up to service Ontario with two things the first thing being a declaration which says I hereby certify that my vehicle meets four out of the six criteria for it being a motorhome we'll link his um, video in our description so you can check out his template which worked for us and then the second thing you show up with is your um, your green slip that proves that you own the vehicle uh, not the green slip for the plates but bring both of them if you're not sure what it is if this is the first time that you're getting plates on your vehicle there are additional things you need such as uh, safety, uh, a used vehicle information packet, and its bill of invoice. Um, so if you already have had your vehicle road ready and insured previously, then you don't need all of those things. However, we did get safety done again for our insurance company. So our insurance company actually needed the safety done. Um, and that was pretty pricey. When Service Ontario to told us that they didn't need it, we were like, ah! Oh. We spent money for no reason, but then it was great because our insurance company actually needed it. So the main thing that I learned from going on Reddit, perusing the schoolie forum, looking at Facebook groups is that people get stopped at the door when their vehicle is just not classed as a motorhome. And it's really as simple as that. Once we classified it as a motorhome, everything went so smoothly and I think that's because on the flip side the insurance providers their hands are also tied like they want to help you but when they go to their underwriters their underwriters are like misinterpreting what the vehicle is and they are limited to a specific set of policies based on the information that the system is providing so once you get that piece of information updated from cargo van to motorhome everything's you everything becomes a little bit more clear so yeah that's it guys we just wanted to share with you our story for this whole insurance fiasco from beginning to end and our parting message is what's our parting message more persistence persistence <laughs> <laughs> how's my hair crazy do you have anything you want to say guys stay persistent uh, don't let them bother you. If you could tell our, tell our friends one sentence, what would it be? One whole sentence. <laughs> one word? <laughs> Persistent. <laughs> yeah, so I hope you found that super helpful. I hope that saves you a ton of grief because it was so anxiety inducing and stressful for me to go through this. Um, and now that I've been through it, obviously in hindsight, it's a lot easier than what we thought it was going to be. If I could say something to my old self circa two weeks ago, I would have been like, just calm down. Right, Mortz? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, any last words? Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. <laughs> he loves it when I put him on the spot. He's like, what do you mean last words? What am I, I supposed to last say? Last words, yes. <laughs> well, anyway, we just hope that you found this informative and that we like save some, we hope that we save someone's grief out there. Um, Should I even pop in the frame? It looks very awkward. No, stay here. But yeah, if you really enjoyed us and we'll be heading on our, on our adventure soon, the best way for you to support us is simply by subscribing to this channel. It costs you nothing and it would mean the world to both of us and more to this dumb stuff. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time on the road to pitches.
<laughs> my signature move. All right, cheers, guys. Bye. The three phases of a camper van conversion. Phase one, get your van. Phase two, convert your van. Phase three, become one with the van. You are actually now a motorhome.